All right, hello everybody. Um, per the request of actually a pretty close friend of mine, um, I have forgotten the singlet for today and I am wearing, well, a brief, but um, I am uh, sticking with Brazilian because, you know, we're basically doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu here. Um, so I did a Brazilian cut. Look at that. Anyways, um, my partner has been graduated to White Belt. He is currently wearing a gi, but we're still going to be talking about things in a no-gi situation. I really just wanted to him to have these arms here, right, so I can actually start attacking these, because that's what we're talking about right now. We are talking about top attacks, and um, I do want to kind of go through a little bit of a review here. Um, when it comes to um, getting uh, you know, a submission for, from here. Um, so if I'm here in uh, side control and I want to free this arm from his chest because he's being very good at defending with this, you know, I've got my uh, connection here. Um, I'm usually going to be over here like this. What, what the, one of the things I didn't really talk about, I think, clearly enough here is that I'm going to take this shoulder. This shoulder is part of the, one of the more important things and I'm going to turn it down, right? Um, I'm not necessarily going to change my body too much, but what I want to do is I kind of almost want to feel like I'm maybe creating a wall, right? So he can't slip underneath my shoulder. So I'm going to turn my shoulder down um, so that it's right butted up against his wrist, right? If I can get a little bit under it, great. But the thing is, is that um, if I'm just trying to... It's going to be relatively hard for me to do that because, for one, I have to give up my connection in order to have two uh, hands free. But also what's kind of happening there um, is that I'm going, you know, hands versus hands here, and I don't want that. I'm going to put the whole weight of my body behind the separation of this arm here. So, the way that I'm going to do that, as I mentioned on the other video, is I'm going to throw my body over, and I'm going to aim to plant my forehead on the mat. And the reason why it's really, really important to plant my forehead on the mat is because, um, again, it's my post. It's what's going to stop him be from me on the roll. So either I'm going to be rooted in the floor over here, or I need to be rooted in the floor over here, right? So there are going to be circumstances in the side control position, like if I'm crossbody or I've got this out. Sometimes this hand is my post. If for whatever reason I have to start raising up my hips, I've got this hand the post. And that's what's going to stop me from getting rolled. But a lot of times, you know, if they're trying to bridge into you and try to get the leg under, I'm going to have my hand on this side and I really want to protect that. So, now that I've taken rest way too much, uh, let's go back to this uh, separation of the arm. So, I'm going to turn my shoulder down and I'm going to use the whole weight of my body to get that there, right? So, you see, I'm no longer rooted in the floor on this side. My feet are acting as posts. My weight is on the very center of his chest now, uh, which is not ideal, right? But because I've got this and I'm starting to attack this arm, I don't want him to roll either way, so I have to actually kind of, you know, pay attention here. If he's really trying to turn into me, maybe I'll get a little bit heavier with my hips. Um, if he's really trying to turn away, which he probably won't because it's going to put pressure on his shoulder, right? And that's what I'm trying to attack here. So once I've got that down, I'm going to take this hand out over here. I'm going to capture his wrist. And it's really super important when you're doing an Americana that my elbow is not only on the ground, but it's right by his face, right? So he can't start to turn his head, because again, one of the ways that he's going to defend this is to actually get onto his side this way, and it won't finish the same way that way. So I'm gonna take this hand under. I've got that 90 degree bend in his, uh, his elbow here. I've got a C grip here. I'm not putting my thumb around because it'll be easy, easy for him to pop out there. And then I'm gonna curl both my wrists. And the idea here, is I'm gonna start putting his elbow into his back pocket, right? So I'm dragging, see that I'm making that sound of his fist against the mat? That's what's going to finish this. And again, what I kind of said up in the other video, um, a lot of times people will start to turn their hand this way because they know that you wanna get that pinky down. Um, and so I might have a real hard time finishing this from this position. Um, and so you could, turning to this grip that I mentioned the other day, where I go both pinkies down and then I turn. Um, the other way that I can do this is that if he's really fighting to bring this up this way, I can bring it to the hip. Now it doesn't take nearly as much to of that turn to actually get him to submit. This is really, really tight here and he'll probably yelp if you go, you know, to that position really quickly. So you don't have to 
rotate as much once you're down in this position. Um, and some people that I've rolled with that um, have really sworn by that. Um, my coach doesn't particularly. He actually likes to finish from up here so they have plenty of room to go to because if you go here and maybe it's not finishing, well, now you kind of have to go back and find out where you're, where you're uh, not quite finishing that. So um, that's going to be uh, your Americana. So one of the things, and this is kind of why I'm bringing this up today, right, is that if I'm trying to push this down, you know, maybe he's really fighting that right? And so he's maybe starting to frame up against me. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pass my head underneath his elbow here, okay? And so for you guys who've been asking me to do more chokes, here's the choke, okay? So he's trying to pass his um, arm back so that I can't get his arm back down to the ground. I'm going to keep this head hand under his head. And what I'm going to do is I'm again put my uh, forehead on the mat, okay? And then from here, I need to get my legs almost vertical here because he's probably going to use his legs to stop me from hopping over because he knows that this head and arm choke is coming. So what I need to do here is I need to make it so he cannot possibly catch me in this transition. So I'm going to come up and then down next to him, right? So. Basically, what I'm doing here, I'm not going to worry too much about holding that, is I'm basically kind of doing a, a three-point headstand. And the thing that I see people do a lot of times with headstands is that they try to do this. So you see that my head and my arms are all in one line, right? So here's my underhook, underhooking hand. It's back a little bit. This is my other hand. It's over by the hips. And if I have this nice triangle here, it's really easy to come into that headstand. Um, if I am, um, if I'm all in that one line, like, I can feel that my balance is not very good there and I'm much more prone to falling over. And you don't necessarily have to get super high. Um, if you look at this, he's gonna be, we're about the same place right now. So if he's right here, this is where his legs are, right? This is all I have to get over. And if he's gonna stop me, he really needs to actually like hook me. So, and you see, I can't get my leg much further than this, right? To kind of prevent that. So I really, you know, my body's gonna be passing over here. I just need to make sure I don't get caught up on those legs. So, again, he's creating some type of frame. So I'm gonna push on that elbow and I'm gonna pin it with my neck. I'm gonna take my head and again, it's going to be easier on a normal person because uh, this is too thick. But I'm going to put my head down on the mat. I create that triangle. So my two hands are in one line, but my head is a little bit off. So that allows me to come up and down. And then from here, I'm going to take my hands and they're going to a chain grip. And here's the thing about the head and arm choke, um, and actually any choke whatsoever, and we've talked about this um, on the, the head scissor and choke video I already did, but your arteries are right here. They're at one level, and in order for you to actually choke somebody out, you need to have pressure coming in on both sides at the same level. So, my head is going to be pressuring into this shoulder, which this shoulder is going to drive into his neck on this side. My bicep on the other side needs to be driving into the uh, same side on the other side of his head. And so, basically, um, you don't really have to worry too much about this hand that's hooking the back of the head. You do want your elbow to stay on the ground as much as you possibly can. So if you can't do it, you need to adjust so this elbow stays down. But, when it comes to finishing this, um, I'm gonna be down in this position, and you see my feet are off the mat. In fact, I'll even try to get my thighs off the mat. And I'm gonna bring my head down to the level that I need to in order to create pressure both on the same side. So if I'm rolling with Jet, who's much smaller than me, my head's gonna be all the way down here, right? And I'm gonna be answering the telephone with my ear here, right? And that's because he's so much smaller than me. If I've got somebody uh, about the size of uh, Punchy Bag Paul over here, um, I might have to be further up or I need to stop, stop using my head and start using my sternum. So I might turn in and belly my sternum into him, 
right? Um, but it's, you have to be really, really careful with this that your pressure is not coming down on that arm. It needs to be coming in from the side. It needs to be coming in at the level of that artery. Okay, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, guys, this is one of the most technical chokes that once you learn how to do it, you're gonna hit it all over the place, okay? It's a very high percentage choke for me. Um, it's one of the easiest ones for me to get right now all the time, but you have to um, understand this concept really, really well, otherwise you're never going to catch it. So if you're not bringing your head down or your shoulder or your chest into the right spot to be able to create that lateral, not vertical pressure, um, you will never be able to finish this choke. And so one of the things uh, when I was uh, over on the other side of the country, over in Maine, that had come up um, was the way that they had taught this choke was to basically, if you couldn't finish it, right, you're down here, you can't finish it, so we'd come up with the knee ride and try to finish it from here. And what it becomes then is less of a blood choke and more of a trachea crush, right, because you're actually bringing that arm down rather than in. Hope, I hope you're still with me. I know this is a longer video, but this is a really, really important choke to know. Um, and it, like I said, it's probably one of my highest percentage chokes. And we'll cover another entry here in a second. But, so I'm here, he creates a frame. I block, I create my posts straight up, straight down next to him. I get that chain grip, grip my elbow is on the ground, and I'm driving in. Notice I'm kind of looking the direction of his head. Now. I start to skydive, and if I haven't gotten it yet, I'm gonna start moving out to up to 45 degrees away from his body, right? If you need to, you can use your near side leg to kind of frame against him so he can't follow you, but a lot of times, you know, when you do this, you're gonna just be able to keep moving while he's moving towards you, and meanwhile, he's passing out. So, you know, once you kind of get this angle and you, you, you get this choke really well, and again, this is something you're gonna to have to practice and practice and practice, um, you know, you're going you're gonna to get it and he's going to usually tap pretty quickly to it. Um, so, that is kind of your basic entry into um, a head and arm choke. And on the next video, I'll go ahead and I'll show you the uh, other entry that you can do, which is simpler, but I think people do it less often. So, we'll be back in a second.